Hello and welcome to Digital Goulash. My name is Chucky e and today I'm going to compare Lightroom 4 with Photoshop Elements. Now some of my viewers have asked me, why are you using Lightroom 4? My answer is, if I have many photos that I want to adjust, I will use Lightroom 4. If I want to cut something out of a picture, do any kind of graphics or photo retouching, I will go ahead and use Elements. Let's go ahead and take a look at the two different programs. In Lightroom 4, we have our navigator over here where we can zoom in to different areas of the photo. I have my presets, which I'll cover later, but you can turn your picture into a black and white, or you can save any kind of adjustments that you've used before. At the bottom, we have a photo bin. We have a developer area where we can see where our picture is being adjusted, our histogram at the top, we have five tools, and then we have our adjustment sliders. Let's go ahead and go over the five tools. Those are the crop, the spot removal, the red eye, the graduated filter, and the adjustment brush. Let's go ahead and jump on over to Photoshop Elements right over here. Very similar to that, we have our tools over here. We have our photo bin at the bottom. We have any kind of effects and graphics over here. And then we have some of our tool options on the bottom. Let's go ahead and jump back to Lightroom again and let me show you how we make our adjustments. Now the first adjustment that we have is our white balance right here. We could go ahead and change the temperature and the tint right there manually. We could come over here to as shot. We could come over to auto white balance, which sometimes doesn't look that good. So let's go ahead and go back to as shot. And the last thing that we can come over and do is pick the white balance eyedropper, pick a gray area, click on it, and it will automatically adjust it for us. Let's go ahead and see how we do that in Photoshop Elements. We go over to the Enhance right over here, and we have our Auto Color Correction. Once again, I really didn't like this Auto Correction right here, so I'm going to go to Edit, and I'm going to revert my photo right there to the original. Now over in Lightroom, we can adjust our exposure, our contrast, and our shadows, whites, and blacks right here. So let's go ahead and do that. I'm going to increase the exposure just a little bit to get that sky a little bit bluer. And then I'm going to take my shadows and increase the lightness of my shadows so I can get some of the detail back in the bottom of the plane. Let's go ahead and do that over in Photoshop Elements over here. I'm going to go to Enhance, Enhance Lighting, and I'm going to enhance my levels. I'm going to drag the white slider to the left and what that's going to do is it's going to brighten up our image. And then we need to look at the underside of the plane. So I'm going to hit the command or control plus right there so we can see the bottom side of the plane. And then I'm going to go over to enhance, adjust lighting, and then I'm going to adjust the shadows right there. And as you can see it brought a lot of the detail back right there. Let's go back to Lightroom again. Hopefully you're not getting dizzy from this. Over here under Presence, we have Clarity, which is very similar to Contrast, but it works on the edges of our photo, or I should say the edges of our object right there. And then I'm going to bump up the Vibrance, which is very similar to the Saturation. So let's go ahead and do that in Photoshop Elements over there. We can go over to Enhance. We can adjust the color, and we can come over here to Hue and Saturation. And if I wanted to bump the saturation up that's similar to the vibrance right there I could do that by coming over here like that and bumping it up just a little bit and then if I wanted to adjust the contrast we could go under enhance lighting and then bump up the contrast just a tiny bit down here and then select OK now let's jump back over to Lightroom over here let's make a few more adjustments over here let's go ahead and scroll down you could go ahead and adjust big sections of the photo. You could adjust the shadows up, the darks up, the lights up, or the highlights up, or even down. You can do that with the sliders over here as well. You could also change over here, you could change individual hue, red, orange, yellow, green, blue, indigo, violet. You could go ahead and change all those. We're going to go ahead and jump down over to the sharpening right over here. I'm going to go ahead and drag my adjustment zoom right over here to an area where I want to look at and then I'm going to sharpen my image right there and as you can see we're sharpening our image. The only problem is is that we've added some grain, we've added some noise to that. So Lightroom has this little noise slider where we can come over here and dial the noise down. 
right there and it's doing a pretty good job we want to preserve the detail though so we're going to go ahead and bump the detail up a little bit try and preserve that now as you can see there's kind of greenish bluish pink dots in here and that's part of the noise so what we want to do is we want to increase the noise reduction like that and then it's going to make those pink and blue and green dots disappear right there so let's go ahead and jump over to elements and let's go ahead and do the same thing we're going to go over to enhance and then we're going to go to adjust sharpness right there I'm going to do the same thing I'm going to adjust it 66 percent right there and as you can see it's starting to get a little bit grainier or noisier so I'm going to go ahead and select OK then in elements now we have to jump over to filter we have to go to noise and we need to reduce our noise right over here we can reduce our color noise by dragging that all the way over to the right over there and we can also reduce the noise by increasing the strength of the noise reduction right there. If we want to go ahead and if we see any artifacting over there, the little blocky little things over here, we can go ahead and hit remove JPEG artifact right over there and we can go ahead and select Okay, so we're doing pretty good, but I don't think this did a very good job. You can see that it still has quite a bit of noise there. I think if we wanted to, we could go ahead and we could do the reduce noise filter again and hope that some more of that goes away. And it really didn't. So you can see the strength of Lightroom right there. Let's go ahead and go back here to Lightroom. Now let's go ahead and scroll down right here. Now most lenses have some sort of a distortion to them. In Lightroom you can come over here and correct it. And there are built-in corrections for each lens. Now Elements has that, but you have to do it with an eyeball. You have to go over to Filter. We have to correct our camera distortion right there. And then if there's any kind of distortion, we have to eyeball it right up there. If there's any kind of vignette there, we could go ahead and correct for the vignette, the darkening of the edge. We could actually even put a vignette in there with the camera distortion. I know a lot of people like to put the added vignette in there and we could go ahead and we could select OK right there. We could hit Command-0 so you can see the edges right there. And as you can see, it's starting to darken the edges over there. Now I'm going to jump over to Lightroom over here, and then I'm going to scroll down over here, and I'll show you that you can fix the vignetting right here. Let's go ahead and go to Fit right here. If there's any kind of vignetting, you could actually fix it right here. Or just like in Photoshop Elements, you could just dial that down and put a vignette right down in here. Now I will tell you the main difference between Photoshop and Lightroom is the fact that everything that I'm doing to this photo right here hasn't been done to the actual picture. All it's doing is it's saving the adjustments for me and if I right click this and export it, that is the only time that it actually saves any of those adjustments right in here. Another nice thing about Lightroom is, is that I fixed this photo right over here so I could keep the develop setting and copy it and copy all these settings right here and then come over to another photo right over here, right click that, go to develop settings and I can paste those settings onto this photo right here and as you can see it corrected it using the same adjustments as the other one. Let's go ahead and jump over to Photoshop Elements right there. We could do the same thing and there is a new actions palette over here. The only problem is when we try to select our actions right over here it doesn't give us the ability to actually record an action. It'll allow us to play one, but not record one. So what you're relying on is somebody else making an action for you and then hitting play. So you would almost need somebody that has the full version of Photoshop to give you the actions so that you could use them. Now I said I would go back to the presets. Now after I created all those adjustments right there, if I had many other photos that I wanted to apply those to, I could either highlight all of these manually, go to Command or Control, select all those, right click them, and come over here to Develop Settings and actually hit Paste. Or if I wanted to keep those for future use, I could come over to my preset palette, hit the plus right there, and then name my preset, and it will save all those settings for me. So the next time I import photos, I could go ahead and click that preset, and then all my adjustments would be done. Let's go ahead and take a look at another thing over here. When we're 
exporting our photos over here, when we click export, that's when all the final settings are actually being placed on our photo. We could come over here, we could export it into the folder, or we could put it into another folder so that we have the original and the adjusted photo, and we could come down over here, resize our photo to a certain dimension. We could also sharpen this for either screen or print right there. And last but not least, we could come down here and we could add a watermark. Let's go ahead and take a look at the watermark. I'm going to go to Edit Watermarks. And as you can see, it puts that watermark down there for me. I could put whatever I wanted down there, and then I could change the location of my watermark. And then it's done. Now in Photoshop Elements, I can't just come over here and copy all those adjustments I made over here and then paste them on there. So that is one of the strengths of Lightroom 4. There is the ability, though, when I come over here and I go to File, and then I go to process multiple files. I could go in there and I could put my own watermark in there and then I could do a sharpen and I could sharpen it for either the screen or for print. I could also come over here, I could resize my image to a certain size and then also rename those and then put the same thing that I did in Photoshop Lightroom 4. I could come over here and save the photos the original in one and then the edited photo in another. They are similar but Lightroom gives you the ability to copy and create presets with all your adjustments. It also allows you to go in there and quickly go from the top or bottom. This is a nice workflow. Start from the top with the white balance, go down to exposure, hit your shadows, your clarity, jump on down over here to your sharpening, then your lens corrections, and then your post crop vignetting, and then you could go ahead, you could right click over here, and then export your file. Hopefully you got something from this video. Lightroom 4 and Elements both have their strengths. Most of you have seen my Elements video, so you don't need to know the strengths of Photoshop Elements. Lightroom 4 gives you the ability to very quickly correct a lot of photos all at once and even create presets for future use. Now if you haven't done so already, please subscribe to my videos, give me a thumbs up, give me a like, and pass my video on to your friends. Cheers!